my name is Curtis Brown, and this is my wife, Tara. And we've been married now for 19 years. And um, I guess I would say my journey started about, um, well, I, it, it's funny because I, th I, I think my journey starts from when I was a young kid. I, um, back then, I don't think I was consciously aware enough of myself to know really what was going on, which is one of the reasons why it took me as long as it did to figure out kind of where I was at and what I was experiencing. Um, I can remember sometimes as a, as a child feeling, um, pretty disconnected or seeing a young, seeing, seeing one of my classmates and thinking how desperately I wanted to be their friend and, uh, how I wanted to be close to them and feel accepted and, um, not recognizing really what that was. Um, but it developed farther. Um, you know, I, I guess I would say I had a pretty normal or average childhood. Um, and in high school, I had, had a lot of friends. Um, most of them though, uh, I had a few guy friends, but most of them were, were girls and Tara knows cause we went to high school together. Um, but it became, you know, even back then I, I and, and I don't think I had cognitively, I don't think I've, I had recognized really then what was going on. Um, you know, I obviously found, um, men to be attractive. Um, I found women to be attractive, but not necessarily in the same way. And, but I don't, you know, back then I couldn't really recognize what was going on for me. Um, then, uh, it came to my mission and one of my mission. And I think there was the, one of the first times that I felt more, uh, or very much connected to men. And so I, I had, I had, um, a really, from an SSA perspective, I had, a very good experience on my mission. Um, my trainer in Brazil was really good for me. He treated me like one of the guys, like, um, I don't think I'd experienced anything like that with a buddy, um, up until that point in my life. He was just really, really good. And while he probably didn't do anything special that he wouldn't have done with just one of his other buddies at home, uh, for me, it was unique. It was, um, something that really set the tone for my mission and me feeling included and feeling like one of the guys and feeling like I could, you know, I knew I could be successful as a missionary, but I felt like I could integrate and be part of the mission, um, there because of him. Well, we dated, uh, when he got home and I was still in school for a year and then I graduated and left BYU without my MRS. <laughs> no. So then I invented a million reasons to go to Provo to see him, um, to spend more time with him there because it was long before cell phones or the internet or email or texting. And so that was our communication was when I would go to Provo and see him. Gosh, we're old. <laughs> so, uh, we dated and at the end of the second year, we, we got engaged Funny, yeah. and married at the end of the summer. And it was all really fast at that point. My experience with the SSA is I probably could recognize it and acknowledge it when I got home from my mission, but then I just buried it again. I just thought the, I mean, it, 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 because it was never something so constant to me that I would just, uh, I thought I'll just not deal with it. I mean, I mean, I, and not that there's, did you have an experience that? No, it, it was, it was just more of, I don't, it's not right here in my face and it, oh, it'll pop up every once in a while, but I just will deal with it. And so I didn't do, I didn't tell her, I didn't, um, I, I was there, no one was ever going to know, um, here as we sit in this conversation, no one was going to know I was going to die and no one would have known, um, was my goal. And I started to have problems um, with pornography on and off. And that 
happened for probably... You're looking at me. I know. I don't know. Probably about 10 years or close to. No, probably about seven or eight. And um, a lot of that had to do with just, it was just coping. It was having to deal with these emotions and the things that I couldn't or didn't know how. Didn't feel like I had the capacity to deal with. And I surely didn't have the tools. Um, So at that point, I uh, went, or, or things had progressed far enough that I'd started down the path of, okay, I've got the pornography either wasn't enough or whatever, and uh, got to where I acted out. Um, and that's probably not the best words. I, I, I did some things with, with people that I should not have done. And um, I, that was over about a period of about a year and it came to the end of that year and I was in such turmoil about it because I couldn't, I, I was living a double life. I couldn't deal with living a double life and, but I didn't know how to deal with it. Um, yet again, not knowing what I could do, didn't have the courage to do what I needed to really do. And so I got up one morning, um, and I hadn't prayed in the longest time and I got up one morning and got down on my knees and it was probably about a 30 second prayer. And I said, I don't know how to get out of this and, but I've got to figure it out and I need your help because I can't do it. And I got up and that was it. I remember that morning just because I was so, we were so disconnected at the time. Um, We were really good at calendaring and being parents, but we weren't very good at connecting with each other because he was so in his crazy, we call it, and I didn't, and I didn't know at the time. And and I kept myself busy. I was the Relief Society president for a while. I, I had four little kids, and so I had what I call the busy syndrome where I just kept myself going all the time. And that was how I dealt with our disconnection. And so that morning he was um, <clears throat> he was saying, we need to have a talk. And I was just busy getting ready, like all the kids out the door and myself out the door. And he was kind of sitting there, and which was a little unusual. And so when he said, we need to talk, I, you know, I knew it was serious. And, and I was hoping that he would finally tell me what was going on because I knew that I couldn't be busy for the rest of our lives. <laughs> so I, um, I remember him saying, you know, I, I have this attraction to men and I have this addiction to pornography. And I, I couldn't have been more surprised if he would have said, I flew to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> I just got back to the moon last night. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I had no idea. And so I remember just, I grabbed a pillow and I put it on my lap and I sat down on the bed and I just kind of sat in, in stunned silence for a while and just listened to him talk and him share his feelings. And I asked a couple of questions, but yeah. um, mostly just thought, okay, where does that leave me? Because I am certainly not a man <laughs> and I don't... I, so I don't know where that leaves me and the kids, and and so it was confusing for a while. And I, and and because of the shame, I didn't tell anyone. I didn't. I you know one of my very first thoughts was, well, I could never say this to my mom. And so I remember, um, I, I didn't tell anyone for more than a year. So um, so it was lonely at first. And all I had to go on was the things that he was telling me because I was a little scared to get on the internet and type my husband's attracted to men and see what came up. And so I just didn't. And so um, we started going to the 12 step not very long after you told me that. Mm-hmm. And um, didn't, I, I don't know that you did, but I certainly didn't say SSA in those meetings at all. No, I didn't. Um, so we talked about the addiction. I think we worked on the addiction part of it for 
about a year before we started seeking help for the SSA. I came home one night and said to her, I think I'm going to do this. Uh, I think I'm going to go to Lifestar, and I would love for you to come do it with me, but um, it's entirely up to you. And I, and I was still naive at that point. I thought, oh, we've been going to 12-step, and so it's all better, and everything's better. And so um, <laughs> It wasn't. <laughs> so when he told me that he wanted to go to Lifestar, I was like, oh, I guess this is bigger than I thought and bigger than I knew even then. So... So we started in Lifestar, and um, Tara uh, got a therapist there. Tara started to go to a support group for women, and I um, I had started to see a therapist at um, Lifestar, and then got referred to uh, David Matheson. And that's, I think, really when things started to change pretty significantly. Yeah. Uh, what I think that I've taken most from going on this journey to where we are now is um, that God, God knows me. He knows us. He knows every single one of us and more intimately than we can imagine. Um, I also know that through our greatest struggles, through our deepest wounds come our greatest gifts if we let God develop those gifts. He will take care of us in his time. And um, he'll take care of me in his time. And he will heal me in his time. And while uh, there are days that I feel like I can't bear things anymore and whether that's and I'm not even specifically talking about SSA when it comes to that just things in general there are certain things that I think oh, I've seriously got to deal with this again today and yet he's doing it for a reason and um, I know he will take care of me